Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Today we're going to install a Archer. Pro Drive rim sprocket. So we're going to convert this MS180C and put one of these uh, rim sprockets on there. So it's a uh, clutch drum rim sprocket and you get a roller bearing in there as well. So uh, it's made by Archer Australia. So it's an Aussie product, I guess. Probably made in China like everything else. But anyway, what isn't? So we'll just take the scabbard off. One thing I like about these... This type of saw is it's a great little tiny saw with 16 inch and just a matter of loosening this off. It all comes apart relatively easy, so it's pretty easy on the maintenance. I cleaned this saw up a while ago, so yeah. And one thing about these, you'll find out that if we zoom in, that you know it's quite easy to get damaged. The sprocket on here, get a little bit of wear on it. And then to buy the whole drum, this is still quite serviceable. It's got a few little marks on it. They're not that deep, but yeah, another couple of years and probably have to uh, replace it. So I'm going to pull it off. The other thing that's very interesting, this washer that's on here, you need to have, it's got nice clearance on there. There'd be at least a millimetre. Got to make sure that you've always got plenty of clearance on that because if that gets a little bit tight, because you put some aftermarket drum on or something, then it can pop off the E-clip through thermal expansion. And also, I'll actually show you those E-clips. There's one way that they go on. They're pressed out on a machine. You've got a rounded side and you've got a flat side. You put the flat side towards you so that it, the shoulder is nice and square so that the thrust pushes against the uh, or the washer the thrust pushes against the washer and the square shoulder locks in tight on this side so if you put it on the rounded side it's a lot easier for it to fly off now there's two ways to get these off you can use a little tiny screwdriver which we've uh, got here we'll just see if we can get this saw around here so you can see it a little bit better I've got a uh, still, I'll just turn this clip round a little bit with my finger. They should be nice and tight, those clips. So they're quite easy to get off. Got to make sure that the screwdriver fits in the slot. So you can, this is a still uh, little screwdriver used for your high and low settings on your carburetor. Uh, but it fits quite well. But what I do find out is that I actually prefer to use this type of screwdriver that I uh, made by grinding a little slot in there. So two of the little fingers on there will fit in there. Now, a lot of times they call these the Jesus clip because sometimes people take them off and they go flying and they go, Jesus Christ, where the hell did that bloody clip go? Because they get a little bit of spring tension on them and they can go flying anywhere. So to avoid that, make sure you put your finger behind it. So we'll put that in there. Push down, oh, my hand's in the way, so maybe I ought to turn it around this way. Might be better around this way, so. Anyway, no, be better that way. I'll just have my hand in there. So we'll pop that in there either side, and it's just a matter of, try to put my hand in there, put a bit of pressure, keep your finger behind there, and just lever it off. Look at that, it just pops off so easily. And if you don't put your finger there, then it will go flying everywhere. Then you'll be saying, Jesus Christ, I've lost the clip. Make sure, if you actually have a look, you'll find out. We'll see whether the camera can pick it up. About the flat side, I was telling you. We'll see whether we can focus. It don't look like it, does it? That's the rounded, that's the rounded side. Hopefully, it's a little bit difficult to see. And this side is the flat side. You may be able to see that. That's the flat side. And that's the rounded side. So make sure 
that the flat side, which is that side, faces towards you. So it goes on that way, the flat side that way. Because when it's pressed out of the machine, you've got a nice square shoulder, and that square shoulder sits in that groove, and there's more metal on a square shoulder than a round shoulder. So you'll lose uh, seating uh, by putting it around the wrong way, and there's a very good chance it could come flying off. So make sure that you put the clip on the right way. And we'll just pull this off. Roller bearing is inside. We'll just get that out. There's a roller bearing. We'll just put them down. And we'll open this one, the Archer. Little plastic bag, so... There's, a, there's two parts there to it, the drum, floating sprocket, and the needle roller in there. So I'll just get that needle roller out. Okay, so there's a needle roller. Now, make sure that you use good high temperature quality grease. These things heat up quite a fair bit, and the last thing you want to do is use some cheap grease and the grease turns to oil and you don't have much so i'm using molly coat high temperature grease and i use a toothpick you don't need a lot of grease on here because the last thing you want to do is put too much grease and it gets all over the clutch so normally what i do is just get a bit of grease like this put it on the inside just dab it around just take a little bit of time putting the grease on. Just check. It's got more than enough grease. Okay, beautiful. Then we do the same to the clutch drum. I'll just take the clutch drum there. I'll just put a bit of grease on him. With a toothpick, because you can spread it actually quite good with a toothpick. So just smooth it around so it's got nice, nice grease on it. And we'll just put a little bit of grease on there as well. Just so that the floating drum has a little bit of... There's not much movement of this. And we'll just pop that on. And you'll see that most of these are stamped like this one is. 387 tooth. I normally face that on the outside, so... Let's just put on there like that, 3872. So that's got a little bit of grease on it. That's ready to go. Now, inside most of all, all your new uh, chainsaws or newer types have a oil slinger arm. And that oil slinger arm picks up on this little notch that you can see there. So... Yes, you can just throw the drum on, and when you start the motor, it'll it'll catch up. But oh, look, I like to make sure, make sure that if I line this up, I'll just try and find it there. Uh, where is it? There it is. Just bring that around. There it is. Should be able to see that. You can see that looks like a little bit of a question mark. So what I like to do is line this notch up, sit it over the top. So I'll just take that off and hold that. My fingers will get a little bit greasy. I just want to line that up, put that in. Beautiful. Now put that back on. And our washer. Then we need to put the e-clip back on. Taking care, again, just to reiterate, that side is the flat side. And that side, I think, look, you can see that. You can see the curve on there. That's the side 
that was punched and the bottom side is the flat side. So that's the flat side. So that flat side there, as you can see, faces towards you so that the square shoulder of the E-clip is in the little slot, meaning that there's more surface area, more square millimetres of metal that's up in that little slot. So it's, it's much, uh, it's going to, Look at that, that's beautiful. And just check and make sure that it, it moves. It's, if that feels a bit loose on there, throw it in the rubbish. Uh, normally with the steel one, I find out that you get about, oh, look. I keep using the same clip, but as soon as I feel that it, it's a little bit too easy to move, then I just throw it in the rubbish. But I always carry a spare kit with me. Uh, we've got one here, where is it? Normally, I have a little still. I've got it here. It's got all different tools in it. I'll just see if we can zoom out. This has all different tools in it, and I've just emptied them out on the bench. And normally, what I do in a couple of Ziploc bags, I carry a uh, brand new uh, needle roller bearing for the, uh, for the uh, clutch, and a E clip, and a uh, thrust or washer uh, fits on there so when you fit these aftermarket kits on make sure that you check and you've you've got plenty of clearance there that it moves up and down on the original steel one which was this one here i would say that you had about oh, up to a millimeter now that's okay because when the bars on there so when you've got this side play that's on here, you always need that side play. And as you can see that the sprocket slides, plenty of room to move and, and the washer here is quite loose. That's what you want. Because when the bar's on there, you will find out that this sprocket will line up with the bar gap as what it did on here you can see those little notches roughly right in the middle of the sprocket and that's what tends to happen on this this tends to sit in the middle position and the only time that the actual drum clutch ever comes in contact with this is when that chainsaw sits there idling in the way so i don't leave my chainsaw sitting there idling for 10 minutes because that's the time when it can come in contact with this so if, if my chainsaw is going to sit down, it's only for about a minute, maximum minute. Other than that, I'll kill it. That's about it. Uh, the best part about this now, these type of uh, floating rim sprockets are fairly cheap. You're looking at about $8. Uh, so they're the only thing that's going to wear out, and it's much cheaper to change this. If you go to a steel dealer and you say to them that you want something like this here in Australia, they'll be charging you up to $70 for something like that. This drum kit was half that price. It was $36. And as I say, these are about $8. The other thing is, and you can't read it real clearly, but if you read on the back of the packet, there's a sticker over there. It fits so many saws. You can see the MS-180, MS-190, 192, 230, uh, 211. And there's a whole bunch of saws up the up up here where the sticker's covered as well. So it even fits an MS-311. Uh, I think it's, a, yeah, actually I'm not 100% sure of that. It may not. But you'll find out a lot of those kits still use a single needle roller bearing and they're all roughly the same. I think the shaft's approximately 12 millimetres, and that's the inside diameter of the needle roller. Uh, so, yeah, look, thanks for watching. Just take care uh, and pay attention to make sure that that's got plenty of side play, because if you were to install one of these, and it's happened to me once, I installed one of these kits, and it was a little bit tight, and the clip came off. So what I had to do was get some wet and dry and rub a couple of thou off it so yes yeah, so I, I had to get some wet and dry uh emery paper put it on a uh, flat piece of glass 
went backwards and forwards, took a few thou off it, probably about four thou, so I was there for about 20 minutes and made sure that I've still got the end float. So, you know, it's Archer are okay. I've had no trouble with the Archer ones. Just be careful of some of the maybe the unbranded ones that are out there. So try and get a reputable brand uh, if you get one of these uh, and, and make sure that you've got this end float. I can't stress that enough. Secondly, make sure that you put your E-clip the right way. So let's call it the rough edge of the clip, which is the flat side, faces outwards. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up.